Hey everybody, happy Wine Wednesday. Kevin and Robin here with a fantastic week of another fun little spring pack. Robin, I'll be honest, I barely looked at what you did this week. It's been so <laughs> busy today, so uh, why don't I open some wine? Because uh, it's one of my faves, hey. and uh, you can uh, tell everybody what uh, what's going on this week. Well, I appreciate your honesty, so uh, we'll all learn about it together. <laughs> all right, sounds good. So this week, uh, we wanted to feature a little white and rosé pack for spring. We are all doing more patio sipping now that the sun is out and it has warmed up officially. Uh, so we went with all French wines and nice. we uh, took it from a regular shelf price of 140 down to 125 if you want to go for all the right. six pack. I like, uh, like what you've done so far. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, this week's wine feature, which we'll get to shortly. We've got a couple rosés. So we've got a little Gamay Noir from Beaujolais in the Laurent Gautier. And then we have this fun little one, which we've talked about a number of times, but the Lermit Dauzan uh, for something from Costier Denim just at the southern tip of the Rhone Valley. Just had that last week. Oh, lovely. It's a little 50-50 Grenache Sanso blend, I believe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so Sanso, if you don't know that grape variety, it's a little less common than, uh, than the Grenache, Mourvedre, Syrah blend you usually see. Sanso typically has really light skins and mm -hmm. really like aromatic, right? So they typically use it in blends in the Southern Rhone for like a really perfume, pretty kind of nose to it. And it works great in Grenache because it really picks up that nice kind of spicy strawberry thing going. Yeah. This is really like dry, fresh, pretty, smells like a nice summery day. And uh, yeah, it's one of the one of the best deals going in Rosé for sure. 20, 21 bucks minus the crazy discount you're doing this week. That's right. That's, uh, that's a, a good start. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we threw in a little Bordeaux blend. So the Grand Verdoux Blanc is back. So it's Sauvignon Blanc with a bit of Semillon. And the Semillon just kind of takes that like grassy, citrusy thing that you get with Sauvignon Blanc and kind of softens the edges of it a little bit, rounds it out, bumps it up, yeah. and just makes it a bit more approachable for patio sipping. Not enough New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc in your lives lately. <laughs> this, one, this one really gives that little bit of flesh to it, a little bit of weight. I think it's a, a little bit of complexity too. Mm -hmm. I really like that wine. If, yeah. uh, if you want a little new take on Sauvignon Blanc, but something still summery, that's uh, it's a good place to start. 100%. Some Chenin Blanc, as always, from the Samoa Reserve. And then, of course, the Carignan Blanc, again, to just kind of like round it out with something new and different. So that's one of our Jeff Perel wines. He does really cool things by finding all these little vineyards that are, you know, kind of getting lost and forgotten and really vamping them up and bringing them back to life. So Carignan Blanc. Yeah, if you haven't had this yet, I would really recommend, well, I love everything mm -hmm. in the pack, but this is such an interesting, unique wine. So Carignan Blanc was a great variety. The first time I saw this wine in France and tasted it, I'd never heard it before. I didn't know it existed. Uh, it's a great variety that really basically almost went extinct. And they found these vineyards in the Cote de Roussillon. So we're in kind of the wild west of France now. We're up in the, the foothills of the Pyrenees as we're heading into Spain. And these vineyards are really isolated. So there's not like a bunch of viticulture going on. We've sort of got a vineyard here, a vineyard there. And they're kind of lost in the mountains in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I remember driving these like single lane dirt roads up these mountain sides, feeling like I was going to plunge off this mountain and die <laughs> at any time. But when we arrived at these vineyards, they were really cool. They're sitting like really high altitude um, and they're sitting in these kind of rocky crags, you know, like they're growing basically in stone. And there's these vineyards were planted like, you know, in Roman times, they've been planted, you know, forever. But now they're in such a unique spot. The only thing around that area is like the old, you know, the old, the odd castle sort of wreckage, you know, there's, there's really nothing there and there's no reason to be there other than to, uh, you know, to tend to your vines if you're if you're if you own fruit there, and a lot of people are kind of walking away from these mm -hmm. vineyards, right? And that was the problem. So Jeff Grell went in there and really saved a lot of these old vines, and doing so saved uh, these these vineyards, uh, these grape varieties, really from just kind of falling off the face of the planet. So it's a really neat wine. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a Northern Rhone white. It's got a little waxiness to yeah. it. It's got that like honeysuckle character to it. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, like what you get in like a white Hermitage or something mm -hmm. along those lines. And I think it's a phenomenal wine a great deal and something and a fraction of the price of oh. what you pay for something like that too so absolutely so it's a really neat one if you if you like northern Rhone wines i really highly recommend trying that it's just a really cool cool wine all right we'll talk peppier let's talk peppier i know you were uh i saw you had the the new decanter magazine <laughs> this week and you were reading Doing my about, research. Uh, about peppier is featured in there i think this uh this one indeed yeah peppier is featured a couple of times which is really great because it was super exciting to get these wines into the shop for us and then to see that they've got some recognition elsewhere as well yeah. um, but you're only going to come <clears throat> track them down here so um, not for long not for long <laughs> 
you know, maybe uh, we almost had to change the weekend. feature <laughs> this week because the staff loved this so much. As soon as it came in, they started selling it, and about half of it goes to restaurants. So we really don't get a lot of it. Um, it's a handful of cases. It's a bit of a cult line when it comes to Miskade. These guys were sort of the the OG, right? They were the first people in Miskade to really take it super seriously to keep old vines around. They work their vineyards organically. They're the first ones to do that. We're the first ones to really like do longer aging on the wines. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you name it. They, they kind of treated Muscadet like, um, you know, Grand Cru Burgundy, even though they were only getting a tiny amount of money for the wines. And now the prices are starting to come up a little bit, but they're still, uh, I think, a really, really good deal. I mean, I compare this to what you get out of, say, Chablis or Sancerre, which is kind yeah. of a similar style of wine. Um, and these are half the price or a third of the price. Yeah, I mean, when I was doing my little research <coughs> last night, we were talking about the grape itself, um, uh, Milan Blanc. It used to be formerly known as Milan de Bourgogne, but the Burgundians uh, really like they Burgundy. kicked so it out and they kicked out the recognition as well. So full themselves. <laughs> you can't use our name for anything, even if it came from here. Oh, well. That's okay. But the grape itself is kind of classically known to be something that's a little bit more neutral, but the benefit of that is it really takes on the soil type and the character of where it's being grown and the style of winemaking that you're choosing to do, which is what makes it so phenomenal in this particular region. It really holds up against cooler temperatures. And then when we get into the cruise, like the Clisson uh, that we have here this weekend, um, it really, really shows the different soils. So Clisson itself having a little bit more sand, uh, warmer climate, so it right. is said to be kind of the most approachable of the crews. Yeah, I like all the research you did there. Okay. You know more than I do. <laughs> Impressed. <laughs> Clisson is uh, yeah, one of the one of the one of the sort of top areas, right? Or crews as they call them in, in Miskide. And and for me, of all the wines we get, and usually we get one or the other because they don't always have everything, right? So last time we had a different sort of uh, crew from them. But the Clisson really jumps out of the glass. Uh, it's 2019, so it's got a little bit more age on it. They do a little longer uh, lees aging on this one than they do with the uh, standard Muscadet. But man, I couldn't get enough of this. Mm -hmm. I thought this was so spectacular. We have a few Magnums, I think, left of this still, one or two. But uh, it is such a great wine. If you want to pick up something, um, do a little you know, shellfish on the weekend or something along those lines. This, this to me is just, you know, I can tell by how many bottles went to staff. Yes, a couple. That this is going to be a popular <laughs> wine. It's probably not going to make it till the end of the week. So, highly recommend that one. Couldn't, mm -hmm. couldn't put a stronger recommendation on it. But at your twenty-seven dollar price point, yeah. you can jump into this bottle, which is giving you your kind of like fourteen months of lees aging. So you're still getting like a little bit of that textural component that they're adding, <clears throat> a little bit of that next level um, wine. Want to talk about lees aging? Sure. We never do any technical stuff, right? Why don't we, why don't we jump into that? I, I just know you want to talk about oh, it. Oh, can't wait. <laughs> so what's lees aging, Robin? Uh, so lees aging, we're taking, as uh, you're converting all of your sugars into alcohol, you get the dead yeast cells that happen with that. So they sort of fall to the bottom of the barrel. Now there's a number of producers where we're going to filter that off right away. But in this particular style of wine, you're letting them sit in contact with the wine for a little bit longer in an extended period of time, anywhere from four to 36 months, depending on where we're at within Muscadet. What that does is it just lifts the aromatics, it adds texture, creaminess, all of those wonderful components that we want. Right, because Muscadet, if just made in the most simple style, is gonna be really lean, really tart, right? And, and having that lees aging just kind of gives it a little softer, mm -hmm. rounder mouthfeel, a little more texture, you know, another layer of interest. And it's, yeah. uh, they take it pretty seriously because they put it, they emboss it right on the bottle there. So it's a big part of the culture of Muscadet. Yeah. Um, so again, when we say Muscadet, we're talking bone dry wines. Some mm -hmm. people just sort of cut us off at Muscat. This is not Muscat, Muscadet is the area, not the grape variety. As Robin mentioned, it's Melon, and it's a really lean, crisp, mineral, intensely dry wine, and it is the perfect thing. If you're doing oysters, yeah. this is your wine. If you're doing any kind of shellfish, uh, if you're doing like Vongole, I love it with that. If you're doing any kind of any kind of richer seafood, anything kind of heavier where you want to kind of cut it, mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is a great place to start and really one of the best wines I think we get in the shop. Everyone's always all smiles when the, uh, when the uh, Pepier comes in the this door. This is true. Yeah. 
Anything else you want to talk about this week at all? or I just encourage you to come and grab these while you can. Come see us at the shop. While you're here, we are starting to accept resumes for our new location and oh, kind of yeah. get that process rolling. So Went up and saw that yesterday. It looks beautiful. It looks <laughs> nice. like uh, the bar is all built and it's looking really good up there. So we're excited to get that open in August. Amazing. Yeah. Lots of things happening. Um, come in and say hi. Yeah. If you want to work with us, uh, you know, come drop off a resume. All right. Thanks very much.